Welcome into the K0LWC Ham Shack. Today, we're talking about the amateur radio bands being under threat again from commercial interests. Let's get into it. The company that wants some more spectrum, it's a company called NextNav. NextNav has some technology that allows more precise 3D geolocation of your position on Earth. So GPS struggles when you're inside of a building or in a dense urban area. NextNav's technology solves that and provides really accurate positioning even in challenging environments, including indoors, as well as really precise vertical or Z-axis positioning. NextNav has filed a petition with the FCC basically wanting to completely rework the band plan for 900 megahertz so they can utilize it for their technology. Now, amateur radio is allocated on 900 megahertz on a secondary basis, but we are licensed users in that part of the spectrum. Now, what's interesting is this has been going on for quite some time. This is not new. Here is a press release from NextNav from April of this year talking about their vision for this new system where they talk about wanting to have this terrestrial base complement or backup to the GPS system and also wanting 15 megahertz of that 900 megahertz band for their use for this mobile broadband that they're going to need. So this is not new. The only thing new here is the fact that the FCC has listened to the petition and has now put it out for comment on the rulemaking. And there's some really interesting language both in NextNav's proposal as well as the FCC's public notice that we need to look at. By the way, if you think videos like this are helpful and you're interested in two-way radio, go ahead and like and subscribe right now and you'll get more videos like this in the future. All right, let's start digging in here. This is from the petition that NextNav sent to the FCC. They break down this kind of current band plan and sharing priorities for 900. Uh, the number one is federal government, some radio location stuff they have up there. And the second, another primary user is something called ISM or Industrial Scientific and Medical. Now, I know many of you are like, I have no idea what an ISM device is and what they're doing on 900. Well, it's kind of a weird amalgamation of a lot of different stuff that doesn't have a home elsewhere. Uh, and it's a short range thing, so hopefully interference is lessened. Um, things like medical devices in hospitals, medical equipment, uh, would be one, jewelry cleaners and jewelry stores, ultrasonic humidifiers, just random either consumer or industrial devices that need somewhere to be and emit noise. They're on 900 megahertz ISM. Even your water or your electric meter that they read wirelessly, that's 900 megahertz ISM. You can see here that that's, you know, of course, the primary use. There's also some other government and location monitoring services thrown in there. Amateur radio down towards the bottom. We, again, we are a secondary user of this uh, part of the spectrum. And then underneath us are a bunch of unlicensed FCC Part 15 devices, which there are a lot of them out there with frequency hopping and all kinds of other stuff, which really makes me think, how is this you know company going to do this? Because there is a lot of random junk out there, especially with the unlicensed stuff that could make this their lives kind of a nightmare. So that's one thing that immediately jumped off when I heard about this proposal. Also in the petition from NextNav is a section where they'll say that they will work with all the 900 megahertz band incumbents that are already there, including the federal government, ISM, non-M, LMS, amateur, and even the unlicensed folks. Now, how you're going to work with the unlicensed Part 15 devices, I have no clue. But like many of these petitions, they're saying, we're going to play nice and make sure everyone's happy. Now, this part right here is one of the more interesting parts for amateur radio because it specifically deals with this. Now, this company and, and this band has not been a new thing. There's many years ago, uh, over a decade ago, they also wanted to do some additional LMS work. So in 2013, they say the AWRL acknowledged that MLMS was already a higher priority than amateur radio and that the AWRL did not file comments in the proceeding at that time um, and nothing has changed. So they're like... Basically, using the AWRL stance then as justification about why amateur radio hopefully shouldn't have much to say this time. And they're also stating that the framework will not impede amateur operations. Um, I'll let you be the judge of that. But it's interesting that they're taking the AWRL's press release from over a decade ago and putting it into a petition now, trying to stave off any concerns. All right, next, we're going to jump into the notice of proposed rulemaking from the FCC that was issued as a public notice this week. Uh, here it is. It is WT docket number 24-240. Comments are due on this proposal by September 5th of this year. I will tell you at the end of this video how you can submit a comment on this proposal. Anybody can do it, and it's quite easy to do. So stay tuned for that. The first section we have to look into that's interesting is this one right here. 
In their petition, NextNav noted that they do have a $1.9 million award from the federal government and the Department of Transportation that they got in the spring of this year for testing its 3D geolocation technology. The first thing the FCC wants to know is, well, will these contracts support experimental testing of PNT in this 900 megahertz band that you're talking about in the petition for rulemaking? They're saying, okay, you got the money. Now are you saying that to utilize the money that you've already been awarded, do you need to for sure have the spectrum? So it's interesting, right, that they're mentioning this and saying, well, hey, when we have this big fat sack of cash now, we really need you to give us the spectrum to do it. So is that going to influence the potential for this to pass? Only time will tell. Now we get to what could be the most interesting part of this entire public notice. There is a section here talking about comments on what extent would Part 15 devices and amateur radio be impacted by this ban reconfiguration, including the elimination of testing requirements uh, on Part 15 devices and amateur radio. They go on to say, what services are being provided by Part 15 devices and amateur radio in this band? Can they be accommodated in other parts of the spectrum and other bands? What are the costs for relocating uh, those people out of 900 and how long would that take? And they also want more comment on the status of any outreach with Part 15 device users and the amateur radio community, which if I just had to take a guess... The fact that they're using, you know, quotes from over 10 years ago from the AWRL saying they didn't have anything bad to say then that they're probably not doing much outreach to amateur radio. Not to mention, I'm not sure how you can talk to part 15 device users um, other than maybe going to the manufacturers of said devices because there are no licenses. They're just devices out there being used by the general public. So that's kind of the extent of things. So comments are due by September 5th. You know, 900 megahertz, I think, really is becoming kind of this ground of the battle for spectrum for amateur radio. Now, again, I'm not going to sit there and blow smoke and say that it's heavily used. It's not. But it is used here in the Twin Cities of Minnesota. We have digital and analog 900 megahertz repeaters, multiple around the Twin Cities metro. Uh, We have folks that are experimenting and using and doing exactly what the FCC intended us to do on 900 right here in Minnesota. So how do you make your voice heard on this? Do you want to submit a comment? Do you want to make sure that your amateur radio voice is heard in this discussion? Well, you can do that. So what you're going to want to do is go to FCC.gov slash ECFS. That is the FCC's electronic comment filing system. Under proceedings, type in 24-240, and it's going to automatically find the comment for NextNav petition for rulemaking. Go ahead and select that, scroll down, and click on search. From there, you're going to want to click on the public notice, Office of Engineering and Technology. And then once there, click on Proceedings, uh, WTB24240. And then you're going to choose this upper right button, Submit a Standard Filing. Here, not everything is required, but you are going to want to make sure you list it as a type of filing uh, for comment. File number, report number, bureau ID, not required. Address of is filer. Fill out your address and then attach your comments and submit. And that's it. You're done. That is how you submit your comment to the FCC on this proposal. So go ahead and read the full documentation. They are down below in the comment. Both NextNav's petition and the public notice are there for your full reading down below. So check those out and give this video a big old like. That's going to help share this video out to other amateur radio operators. And you share it out yourself. Post it on Facebook. Put it on X. Put it on Reddit. Let's get the word out so we can make our voices heard in the amateur radio community. That's what makes this country great. So let's use our collective voices to make sure that they understand where we are coming from on this issue. And I hope we hear from the league sometime soon. I'm curious to what they think on this as well. So if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Again, give it a big old thumbs up and I'll catch you again next time.